located in the southwest region of Bolivia. Encompassed by the Andes, at an elevation of nearly 12,000 feet, lies the world's largest salt flat, the Salar de Uyuni. The town of Uyuni is just a few miles from the edge of the flat. The town is home to 29,000 residents and the main gateway to the flat for over 60,000 tourists a year. To the south of town is the famous Uyuni train graveyard, Cemeterio del Trenes, comprised of over 100 locomotives in varying states of rust and decay. Pretty much every tour company will bring you here before setting off for the flat, but it can also be reached on foot. There are no restrictions, and you can pretty much do whatever you want. Just be careful, you can easily misstep or cut yourself. So as you can see, we're going to take a group picture on the top of the train here with our group leader over there. If you arrive at the uni the day before your tour, I would recommend visiting before your tour starts. My friend Neil and I did, and it gave us a lot more time to explore. Tours will normally stop there long enough to see a few trains and take a few photos. Be prepared for cooler weather, so bring a jacket because the nights are pretty cold in the uni and the days aren't much better. If you're leaving from the uni, the only way to see a sunset is to go in the afternoon the day before your tour. Today we have signed up with Red Planet Tours here, or Red Planet Expeditions, to do a three-day, two-night uni tour out to the Salt Flats. And then I will be heading to uh, northern Chile, and my friend Neo, which you might remember from uh, Bangkok, he was my bike tour guide there. Uh, he will be joining us, and he'll be heading back to uni here to stay in Bolivia to work as a bike tour guide for gravity on the death road in La Paz. So our first stop this morning is here at the train graveyard, which is uh, exactly what it sounds like. They just brought old trains out here and dumped them off the tracks and left them to uh, rust away. And people come out here to see what it looks like. Right now, if you can see behind me, there are a lot of people here now. Probably 20 other vehicles, which means probably close to 50 or 60 other people. And then they used to carry over this area because in Lamas Caramas, lot of people. For 50 years, until 1952, this was the train station. So for our second stop today, we've stopped in this little village of Kolchani. It's maybe uh, a half an hour, not even a half an hour outside of Uyuni. And um, we're gonna go see how they produce table salt basically here. And a few of the hotels are actually, like this one behind me, are made out of salt bricks. Kolchani is home to dozens of family-run salt works, none of which export outside Bolivia. We are guided through the streets before stepping into a salt work where we are shown how the locals excavate and process their salt. Salt is a pretty vital part of life and commerce. If you're interested in learning more about how it shaped our world, check out Salt, a world history by Mark Kurlansky. It's just after 1.30, we just got done having lunch in that little town, and uh, we've come to the third stop of the day, uh, which is the Dakar Monument. They do a car race, a uh, motorcycle race. I don't know exactly what Dakar entails, but they do a race, and it comes through here every few years. It's a pretty cool landscape so far. I mean, everything around me is white all the way to the horizon. There's a few mountains and then blue skies. Over the years, dozens of flags from all over the world have been planted near the Dakar salt sculpture, making it a great place for photos before heading into the heart of the flats. officially made it out into, uh, I think this probably is part of the middle of the salt flats here. It's a little wet still. Uh, it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be the dry season. But you can see right here, just a little glaze of water on the top, which actually makes the pictures really awesome because it reflects the blue from the sky and uh, the clouds and possibly the stars tonight. Yeah, I'm on Oasis.
after a few hours of driving through the vastness of the salt flats and stopping a few times to see um, the salt in the water actually and kind of take some pictures and do some funny things, we're at uh, Inkawasi Island, which is sort of this cactusy island here in the middle of nowhere, and we're going to hike up to the top of it. Inkawasi Island is the remains of an ancient volcano that became submerged when the Salar de Uyuni was a prehistoric lake around 40,000 years ago. So right over there is the Andes, and beyond those mountains is Chile, which used to actually belong to, in part, Bolivia, but Chile actually took it while they were on carnival, and uh, yeah, now they don't have a coastline because of it. Around the edges of the flats, the salt can be around 20 feet thick. The amazing thing is, as you move inward, the salt can become as much as 600 feet thick. Well, we have made it here to another part of the salt flats, and this part looks actually like a little bit of snow. Um, under your feet, it kind of feels like ice as well. As day one winds to a close, we pull out the props we picked up in Cochani and have a little fun while waiting for the sunset. Since we're surrounded by flat white salt for miles, Uni gives us a unique chance to play with perspective photography and goof around a little bit. We've been able to take some really awesome pictures out here and it's really windy and now we're going to do a sunset with some wine. After staying the night in a hotel partially constructed of salt bricks, our first stop on morning number two is to wash the salt off our vehicles and visit a small quinoa museum. At this altitude, it is hard to grow most crops, but quinoa prospers. Rich in protein, fiber, and low in fat, quinoa has seen its popularity rise all over the world in recent years as a superfood, but it was once the key product of the Incan Empire. This crop has been vital to the people of this region for centuries, but now in the Andes, much of the quinoa is grown for outside markets, leading to poor farmers selling most of their quinoa to buy rice and pasta at cheaper prices, which don't contain nearly the benefits of their own quinoa. Since quinoa and coca are both huge agricultural products here in South America, they've actually found a way to make beer out of them. So these are the artisanal beers made of quinoa and coca. So we've made another stop at another outpost here and they're just telling us about the rock formations and a few of the uh, plant life types out here. And you can actually see a geyser on that uh, mountain over there. I think it belongs to Chile, but it's steaming right now. And I've got this pretty cool landscape to walk through for a while. We're gonna spend about 15 minutes here and then we're gonna head off to what he calls the Stinky Lagoon. Here it costs five Bolivianos to go to the bathroom, which is roughly uh, around 75 US cents. And if you are to uh, throw trash or go to the bathroom anywhere other than the bathroom, it's 500 Bolivianos, which is around 60 or 70 US dollars for the fine. Driving through the small Chaguana Desert, we are surrounded by dormant and extinct volcanoes. The path through the desert is incredibly bumpy and dusty. As we continue, we spot a lone fox near the side of the road. Is that any big jerky? You coming in? <laughs> he's so cute. Oh, he's, got, he's got a sad face. No, no, Shati, no. Can't eat it. Yes, he likes it. He's eating the Ritz. Yeah, but the others fly away now. We only saved one. I'm sure it'll find it. Finally made it to where our guide Carlos said would be the Stinky Lagoon, and uh, it's filled with salt. And it looks like this is uh, where you're going to find a lot of flamingos. Once we'd enjoyed the company of the flamingos for a little while, we made a pit stop before being dropped off to walk to our lunch spot. Now we're just going to have a picnic lunch here next to this lagoon behind me. After driving over some more unique terrain, we have come to uh, the rock of stone, whatever this thing, the tree of stone, I think, which is right there behind me. Um, it's wind-blown rock that looks like a tree. So 
So the wind erosion over thousands of years plus the uh, frozen ice that actually, or the frozen water that actually cleaves these rocks has created this cool landscape. We've just arrived at the Eduardo Avaroa Reserve, which is a national reserve here in Bolivia, which is very, very close to the Chilean border. And uh, it's 150 Bolivianos to get into the reserve. And then you actually can get an optional passport stamp, which I'm probably going to do. And uh, then we're gonna go to the bathroom and we're here at the Colored Lagoon as well, right here at the beginning of the reserve. Here at Laguna Colorada, you are met with an otherworldly landscape. Red algae and borax deposits combine to create a contrasting red lake with white islands. Mixed with surrounding mountains and vegetation, it feels like walking into a painting. The water is very warm here. It's a natural spring. Just a wild llama coming up to greet us. Located at roughly 4,800 meters or 14,000 feet above sea level, Sol de Mignane is highly volcanically active with sulfur springs and steaming pools of mud. Up here, if the altitude doesn't get to you, the smell of rotten eggs might. We stayed just long enough to take some funny videos and run through the steam, but the odor, high winds and cold made it so we didn't want to stay long. Our humble abode for tonight number two is going to be this rustic little uh, hotel here. Um, no electricity, I don't think. After certain hours, it runs on solar power, so uh, tonight's not gonna have any heating or anything like that. We do have sleeping bags provided by uh, the tour company, which is good. We're gonna have tea now, and then we're gonna have some dinner later, and we've got this beautiful view behind us of the mountains and a little lake. We are truly close to the middle of nowhere. Hours from what could be called civilization. It's peaceful, but it's cold at this altitude. Good morning and welcome back to day three of the U Uni Salt Flats tour with Red Planet. Um, I can tell you that last night was pretty cold. Uh, we did have blankets and sleeping bags, but still uh, slept in my clothes. And right now you can probably see my breath. It's probably still around freezing. I can't really tell the temperature. Uh, there's no data out here to, to do that. And I don't think anybody has a thermometer, but uh, we had a decent chicken and pasta. Uh, supper last night with some red wine and then this morning we just had pancakes, yogurt, um, oatmeal and some fruit and we're gonna be on the road today for just a few hours before me and another one of my uh, group mates is gonna head into Chile to San Pedro de Atacama and then the rest of the group is gonna head back to Uni. I forgot to mention that really close to our hotel there was a hot spring but it was way too cold to walk down to at night so most of us just passed it up. So we've made it here to the border of Bolivia and Chile where I just got my passport stamped. I'm still on the Bolivian side. We're waiting for a bus to take us to the Chilean side and it's about 45 minutes by bus from here to uh, San Pedro de Atacama. So I'll be in Chile for the next few weeks, which is gonna be fun. Uh, San Pedro de Atacama is supposed to be one of the best places to see the stars in the world. They actually have the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, which is one of the uh, telescopes that searches for radio waves out in the universe. So I might go see that if I'm able to get registered. So the rest of the group is heading back off to uni today. So that over there is Chile. Thank you. 